Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, uh, St. Gabriel Board of Realtors. Um, it's a great honor. Uh, well, uh, oh, was it on? Okay, everybody here? No. No. Hello? Hey, guys. All right, thank you. Well, I, I didn't bring my paintings or calligraphy works today. You know, I, I brought my uh, thoughts and my um, experience in real estate law and landlord tenants litigation. I, you know, I, I hope that this is helpful for you guys. I, I know that you guys are selling houses and buying houses for your uh, uh, clients. Uh, but you know what? What is? What are the two um, uh, typical uh, buyers in real estate? One of them, uh, one of them is uh, buy the houses for their own residential uh, uh, premises. The other one is buy the houses for the uh, investment purposes. And they, they, um, you know, they buy the house and they lease it out. Well. Um, I, I just walked out of a, uh, a trial yesterday in a landlord tenants uh, case in Santa Ana, Orange County Court yesterday. Um, you know, it was landlord tenants law uh, in nutshell is a uh, uh, is a contract law because <clears throat> you know I, I like to like walk around when I am uh, when I am talking. So uh, if I if you guys don't hear me, uh, I will speak up a little bit so that everybody can hear. I can take the mic. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, in contract law, it's always um, A and B, uh, the landlord is standing on the side of A, the tenant is standing on the side of B. So you guys make an, a, an agreement. You guys basically can agree to everything uh, that you think is fair and reasonable. Um, well, because uh, in California, statute of fraud uh, mandates that if it is related to real estate, you have to put it in writing. So, uh, and also, if the rent is over five hundred dollars, um, you know, you better put it in writing to avoid any fraudulent claim that there is no contract. Um, uh, therefore, the the writing is mostly uh, used in. Uh, landlord and tenants agreement. But I'm not saying that an oral agreement is not enforceable. Um, uh, today I'm going to focus on the written agreement uh, scenario uh, where the disputes uh, arise. Um, despite whatever you guys agree as a landlord and tenant, there are laws that a landlord or tenants have to abide Let's say in this agreement, I lease you this property for uh, $2,000 per month, which is due 27 so the, each and every month. All the other terms are silent. We don't know what are the other terms. Then the question comes, what should the landlord do uh, in this scenario? Uh, do, do, do the landlords have any duty to do anything to maintain this property uh, when you list out? What if I list out a property without a toilet in the room? What if I list out a property without a window? What if I list out a property without a smoke, uh, a smoke detector? Those are all prohibited in California. This is California, great California, that um, actually place a very heavy burden on the landlords. They have laws that mandates all the duties of, uh, for landlords. Of course, at the same time, there are some duties th that are placed on the, on the tenants as well. Um, you know, I, you know I, I was given uh, 25 minutes to give this speech, uh, which I usually give in five hours, so I, I got a rush. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, I, you know, I, I have uh, uh, a short list of most of the duties um, in California that the law mandates on the landlord. Because um, I was limited to three pages in the paperwork that I gave out, so uh, I have to minimize the words. I, I'm not sure if you guys can, can see. Did you guys get the flyers, each and everybody? Yes. Yes. All right, so in California, <clears throat> there are many kinds of uh, uh, defects that could render a, a rental unit unlivable. 
unlivable uh, in, in the legal term for it is inhabitable. If the house is uninhabitable, the tenant can refuse to pay rent. Well, the, those are the major um, uh, conditions that uh, could render this uh, a rental property uh, unlivable. Let's say that there's no, there's no weather protection of roof. Let's say you rent out a house that, that has a big hole in the, uh, in the roof and there is a problem. Uh, the, your tenants will be in and say that, well, you know, I haven't, you haven't repaired the, the, the roof, I'm not going to pay you the rent. And you, if you go to the court and file the unlawful detainer case, uh, even the judge gets to hear it, you lose it. The, the, the defense, you know, the absolute defense in unlawful detainer case is inhabitability. If you lease a house that's not livable for reasonable people in, uh, according to the reasonable standard, you cannot collect rent. That's the law. All right, let's, let, let's go through uh, each and every one of them very quick. And second is uh, pl uh, plumbing. Just as I mentioned, if you don't have a toilet that's working, your tenant does not pay. And you don't complain, why don't you, why don't you pay? You know, the, 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 the landlord will go to court and say that I can't pay because I can't, I can't pee and poo. <laughs> so, um, uh, gas facilities, uh, your tenants move in and they can't cook, so they can't leave, they can't leave well there and so they, they don't pay. That's a good excuse and that's a, a, a good defense in the court as long as they prove it. Okay, I'm going to talk to, to you guys about how the litigation goes on, but I, I want to give you a general idea as to what duties that the landlord has in California and uh, the duties for your tenants so that you, you have a better idea as to why the litigation goes in uh, two ways. Um, uh, a, a elect, a electric system, uh, a house cannot... Uh, be listed out without electricity or if the tenants moved in let's say I uh, two months later the electricity uh, System has a big problem it, it catches on fire or there was a shortcut uh, there, there was a shortcut on the uh, electric system and You have to repair it before you repair it then the tenant can refuse to pay rent um, Let's say an adequate uh, trash Replacement and also you guys need to a, a very small issue when you lease a property the the, the garbage uh, Disposal in the kitchen is a key uh, dispute nowadays. I have I, I had a case that the, the tenant does not have the uh, uh, the uh, garbage disposal in the kitchen um, She complained to the landlord the landlord didn't repair it or uh, replace with a new one and the judge actually ruled in favor of the tenant. I, I don't know if uh, there's any case law, but if it's all a factual dispute, if the judge, find, if the judge finds that this waste disposal or this uh, garbage disposal is so essential to a human being's living, uh, as a modern and reasonable standard, the judge can rule uh, in favor of the tenant. So, um, I have some other cases that tenants raise up that, oh, the uh, garbage disposal is not working, and uh, I have complained the tenant, uh, the landlord didn't uh, replace it. The judge is ruling in favor of the, the landlord. So, uh, the law sometimes is all, uh, the law is clear cut, but the facts are not. So, in, in trial, it depends upon how you prove it or disapprove it. Uh, it's just a, a, a side note on that. Uh, floors and stairways and railing in good repair. Uh, when we talk about good repair, we, we, uh, the court, or the, the law imposes a reasonable standard. Let's say that the, 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 um, in a community, you have four or five units in that house. Uh, on a common area, the law imposes an ongoing a uh, positive duty for the landlord to regularly or reasonably check the safety the safety in the common area. Let's say there is a uh, uh, there's a big hole in the driveway, and you know that there are many kids 
uh, that are living in uh, that community, and the tenants, or any, any one of the tenants, uh, gave you a call and said that, Mr. Landlord, uh, there's a big hole on the driveway. I have two uh, minor kids. It's very dangerous. You've got to repair it. If you don't repair it, any of the kids fell into that hole, you will be held responsible, at least to some extent. Of course, the, the court is going to look at how negligent is the parent. Because the, 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 the judge will uh, the judge or the jurors will think, well, there is a hole. Uh, you know that there is a hole, tenant. Why don't you take care of the kids? Make sure that they don't come out and jump into the hole. So it's, it's always like a pulling a ball from the he, uh, from the head and tail. You, it's it's always a battle. Uh, but you know, there's a chance that the landlord will be held responsible in that scenario as well. Uh, also, maintain the common area in a safe uh, in a safe condition. What about the stairs to a, an apartment? Let's say there are some stairs, and you never had anybody maintain the 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 the. Um, uh, safety of the uh, stairways. You don't have any person cleaning the common area, and one day there's somebody is throwing a some apple peels or some banana peels on the stairs, and one of the visitors came to see one of the tenants, and she or he fell fell off from the uh, stair and uh, uh, broke his uh, leg or knees. The landlord is somewhat responsible. And you may think that why, Jack, you were saying somewhat. Look, there is, is always a, a two-side uh, uh, sword. Uh, because you, you look, uh, the landlord might be negligent in failing to provide a person, a, a, a maintenance person, to clean or to check uh, the, uh, the stairways or the common areas. What if the, the tenants himself throw the banana peels on the, on the stairways? And then it becomes an argument in, 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 in defense, in defense uh, of comparative negligence. Hey, tenants, you are also liable for this situation as well. So in that scenario, we will uh, be, uh, I, I, I brought this up just uh, to remind you that this common uh, area safety, uh, but it doesn't mean that as long as there's a problem in common area, the landlord will be, 100% liable. It's all a factual, uh, it all becomes a factual issue when it comes to court, all right? Now, um, after that, um, we, I have listed some of the uh, um, uh, conditions that the landlord is supposed to maintain on the leased uh, property. Uh, right after the duties for uh, the landlord, I have listed the tenants duties. Uh, uh, we don't have time to go through each and every one at this in my 25 or 30 minutes. If I go over five minutes, I hope that you guys will allow me to finish this. Um, uh, the tenants must do all the following. You guys can check. Of course, one of them is paying the, pay the rent. And, and uh, um, you know, you don't, you don't intentionally destroy or break uh, any part of the houses that were uh, uh, maintained in a good condition. Um, one of the things that I want you guys to be aware, <clears throat> in California, landlord can sweep, uh, we would call it, a sh a, a, you know, basically pass out some of the duties to the tenants by agreement, according to a reduction of rent. Let's say, I just as I just mentioned, the, the landlord has a duty to maintain the, to regularly um, check the safety of the common area, of the house, let's say the roofing, uh, uh, ventilizing, um, uh, smoke detector, you know, the, the landlord does have that duty. What if that you and a tenant agree that tenant will be responsible for maintenance and everything on this house? Is that legal? Is that legal? Yes. It depends. 
let's say the rent. The rent, the, 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 the reasonable rent for this house, let's say this is a house, uh, to, uh, 1,000 square foot, and uh, 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 we rent it at $2,000 a month, which is due uh, on the, fifth, on the uh, third of each and every month. If this is the reasonable rent, and then you place that inspection duty and maintenance duty on your tenant, the law says you have to give a reasonable deduction. <coughs> and that deduction has to be noted in the lease agreement. You can't just say that tenant responsible for everything. The court will look like it's not reasonable. Well, a maintenance duty and inspection duty is a very serious uh, responsibility. You got to give some consideration for that. How much does that maintenance work? Uh, value to you what is what, what does it uh, what is the worst for that inspection the lawyers well uh, you know your lawyers will help you think of a very good term well a reasonable and a fair rent for this unit is two thousand dollars but San Gabriel uh, Board of Realtors lease it to you for fifteen hundred dollars uh, five hundred dollars is considered is for the is a deduction for the maintenance or uh, maintenance and inspection, and you are responsible for everything. That term will make the uh, deduction and the um, passive duty of maintenance legal and good in court. So you have to identify how much make it a reasonable deduction instead of just a very general a a cover all a catch all term. A tenant is responsible for everything. Usually, in the court, I would say that ninety percent, ninety percent of the cases that the judge or the jurors are fine, it's reasonable. You 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 place a, a heavy burden on the tenant, and it seems that it didn't clarify what type of consideration you gave for that. All right, this is uh, uh, I will uh, you know pass this first page. Um, uh, it's, it's for your feature reading, and they, uh, actually was, in the first page I have some small terms that uh, cover some of the California codes, civil codes, and uh, some of the case laws that um, make all these laws into being. Um, you guys can check it out when you have time, and uh, reading some of the case laws will help you in understanding the law. Now, uh, the second, well, most if I if I am uh, uh, not exact or accurate, it, it is close to the number. Ninety percent of the landlord and tenants litigation um, involve a uh, failure to pay rent. <laughs> Do you guys agree? Yes. Um, well, you, you have an agreement that, as I just said, the tenants are responsible to pay rent uh, according to the agreement. Uh, I will give you a walkthrough as to how this, uh, how uh, landlord and tenants uh, litigation from beginning to the end. But uh, I only have about 15 minutes. Uh, I will go very quick. Uh, if you don't uh, catch me, please, uh, you know, talk to me afterwards. Uh, I will try my best to help you get a uh, uh, a good understanding as to how this uh, litigation goes on. Uh, if the tenant doesn't pay rent, what do you do? <coughs> if you bought a house, you want to get some income from your investment, you initiate what proceeding? <coughs> yes. You, you want to start a unlawful detainer action. In California, it's called unlawful detainer action. In other states, you may they may call it eviction or uh, a, a, a bouncer action. But in California, it's unlawful detainer action. However, in California, an unlawful detainer action cannot even be initiated without a three-day notice. A three-day notice. I am. I'm, I give you a sample of uh, my three-day notice. Uh, uh, sir, can you uh, zoom out this uh, 
notice so that everybody can see the full page. Full page. All right. Beginning at uh, the head, the the headline. Okay, this is a very technical uh, document. Why I give you a sample? Maybe you guys think it's really no, it's so simple. I can text message to my to my tenant. Hey, hey, young man, you gotta pay me in three days. Otherwise, I'm gonna kick you out. <laughs> three day notice is the biggest problem in unlawful detainer uh, litigation. This is somewhat like a Bible three day notice. It's hard to change each any terms. I marked the little uh, code sections in that uh, because each and every term in this three day notice has a meaning, has its own significance. Um, uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, it's a three day notice to pay or quit. This is, a, this is also called a three day notice conditional. There's another three day notice. It's just a three day notice to quit. But that's not, uh, that, in that scenario, the landlord just doesn't want to collect the rent. They just want to kick out the, the tenant. But most, uh, in most scenarios, the landlord wants to keep the tenant and kept collecting rent. So this is a conditional. You either pay me or you go out. So before you decide to, send, to, to uh, provide this three-day notice, make sure you know what you want. If you just want the tenants out, three-day notice to quit. Or a three-day notice to surrender position. But uh, if you want to continue to collect rent, uh, three-day notice to pay or quit. The first line is two. You have to um, name your tenants. Look, if let's say that uh, John Doe lists this property, our uh, property, but you know that John Doe has a wife, a pretty Doe, and uh, John Doe and a pretty Doe has a, a daughter. <laughs> you give only notice to John Doe. This three day notice will be quashed, or there would be a demur, and when you, even you file your lawsuit. And there's, I'm going to talk to, uh, uh, procedurally later as to what are the consequences if you make mistakes in the three day notice. You need to name John Doe, Pretty Doe, and Cutie Doe on the first line. To name each and everyone that you know that lives in this house to avoid any delay in the eviction action. Okay? L even the kid who is just one month old, you need to name, even if she doesn't have a name, you see the baby of John and Pretty Doe. <laughs> Otherwise, you kick John Doe and Pretty Doe out. The um, a, a baby dog can come up and say that you didn't evict me, <laughs> and my parents need to take care of me. So your you whole action needs to go over all again. Okay. So now you read the 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 the, the uh, words behind that line and all other occupants of the premises described below. Sometimes I I have clients who is very uh, knowledgeable and educated and they initiated the own um, uh, unlawful detainer case for three and a half years and the tenants are still there. And they came up to me and said, Jack, what happened? I did all this according to the court website and this and that. I, I take a look at the um, uh, three day notice to pay or quit. She's missing that. All other occupants and, uh, and uh, all occupants of the premises described below. Under California Civil Procedure, uh, Section 415.46, you need to identify all known and unknown occupants of the, ten, uh, of the premises in order to have a complete and successful uh, eviction. So if you don't have this in it, what if the John Doe leased out to, to to Joe Doe, to another guy, 
sub list the, the this let's say that I list the John list this section to that gentleman for uh, the technician over there. You you kick out a John Doe, pretty Doe, and a baby Doe, but uh, a technician Doe is still here. <laughs> so yeah, you need to have a complete eviction uh, notice, the three day notice. Now, uh, of course, next you will say, please take notice that this, uh, uh, you know, within three days of this notice, you need to pay the rent in the amount of blah, blah, dollars from what month? Now, the next part is also very important. Rent from, let's say, March 2014 to June uh, 2014, how do you calculate the rent due? Let's say, you have, in the lease agreement, you have a term that um, if you are late for uh, beyond the tenths of each month, you will have to pay a penalty of $60 or $100. Do you count that $60? Do you place that number, add this number to the monthly rent? Let's say monthly rent is $2,000. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes or no? No. 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 You guys are all good lawyers. <laughs> all right. No, you cannot uh, put any like uh, penalties or any fees in it. Merely only rent. Okay, if you place anything in it, you will see a very good, very well drafted notice of demur to your complaint. Notice of demur for overstating the rent, even one penny. You would rather stay less than what you're you're supposed to get, than demanding more, because if you demanded more, you would have to come back and do all this all over again. So calculation is very important. It's just one of the mistakes that people would make. Ah, uh, you did a uh, uh, plus the penalty of one hundred dollars. You owe me six thousand and three hundred and sixty dollars. No, it doesn't work. For that. Uh, $360 you would have to uh, get it in a, uh, a another lawsuit or the damage part when it goes to trial you need proof to the judge hey judge you want to uh, actually I have some extra uh, pleadings to the damages I have uh, penalty terms in this uh, agreement and you want to I want to have that $360 in my judgment usually the judge will give it to you all right but in the three day notice no um, now, you, we, we go to the next paragraph. Within three days, service of this uh, of this notice upon you. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about service, how we should serve this three-day notice. But I'm going to skip this very quick. Uh, look at the uh, the uh, part that I underline. Who will be able to receive um, payment between the hours? Um, of 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Why is this so important? Uh, well, in this scenario, I am the attorney for my client, but the same requirement for the manager. If you have a manager for this unit, you don't, you don't, you in your notice, you don't say that come to my house uh, to pay the rent. Doesn't work. If you have a management, you need to give the manager's name and business hour for your management, uh, either a company or manager, so that tenant can come in to pay the rent. Otherwise, same thing, you will receive, you would receive a notice of demur, saying that that notice is vague and ambiguous and uh, it doesn't constitute a good uh, uh, three-day notice. It would, same one would delay your whole proceeding. Very important. Uh, if your business hour is 9 to 5, uh, I declare it as 9 to 5. Uh, if I ever say a uh, uh, different time, you, you make sure that uh, it is clearly stated in this three day notice. All right, um, we go to the next. Of course, in the last paragraph, you would give out all the um, uh, demands. Uh, if your tenant doesn't comply with the demand to pay rent, you would uh, declare a forfeiture of the rental agreement, recover the possession of the premises, uh, and recover the rent demanded, and recover damages for each day that's holdover, holdover damages. 
All right. Well, I would uh, talk a little bit more about the last remedy that you would get in unlawful detainer action. Uh, of course, uh, you would have to uh, sign on this document. Either you or your manager needs to sign this. If it's a manager, at the, uh, at the uh, signature part, you would need to place the manager's phone number or your own phone number on it so that they can contact you if there's any questions. All right. Um, a, a little note that, a very interesting note. I mean, unfortunately, to live in, uh, uh, live in practice in California. In New York, just uh, two or three months ago, uh, New York Supreme Court actually held that, uh, it's in New York, not in California. <laughs> actually, the lawyer cannot serve the three-day notice and then file the lawsuit immediately after the expiration of the three-day notice. Uh, I have a little note that um, uh, New, York, New York case law, uh, because in that New York case law, the, the court held that the three-day notice violates the FDC debt collection 30-day notice. Because in federal law, if you guys, some of you guys are lawyers, you may know that uh, uh, in federal law, if you want to collect a debt, a federal debt, you need to give a 30-day notice so that they can pay the debt or ask for a validation of debt. New York Supreme Court held that, no, in New York, the lawyers cannot do it. Uh, but fortunately, we are in California. It is still legal in California. Lawyers can do this notice for the landlord. All right, it's just a side note, and uh, you know, if you go to New York, uh, you may need to consult a local lawyer for this three-day notice, right? <clears throat> but if it's, if it's you yourself send out this three-day notice, there's no bar. It's just a bar for the uh, attorneys and lawyers in, in New York State. Um, well, uh, let's turn to the third page, which is right after this. Um, this third page is actually in correspondent to the uh, part that I mentioned to you guys for CCP California Civil Procedure CCP 41646. Uh, at the time you file the unlawful detainer action, you always, I, I would always do, even I know that there's no other tenants or other occupants living on this premises, I would give this pre-judgment claim of right to possession attached to the unlawful detainer complaint and summons. I would, you always do this because just for safety reasons. If you attach this document, this document you don't fill out, but you attach this with your complaint so that if there is any occupant, they need to claim the right of possession before you know, the, the, the before trial, because it says it's a pre-judgment claim. Anybody, if they don't file this claim, and then you can uh, move any known and unknown occupants uh, after the trial, and usually the judge will grant your, mo uh, your uh, request under 41646. All right, it's just a side note. It, it, don't ever think that, oh, I, I win my trial. How come this uh, uh, technician, though, was still there? I thought everybody is supposed to be kicked out. But look, the judge will say that, well, counsel, oh, uh, you know, landlord, look, you didn't file this pre-judgment uh, claim of uh, a right of position when you filed the unlawful detainer action. So uh, just one of that. Well, we've covered uh, one of the most important notice in unlawful detainer action. I'm going to walk through the proceedings very, very quick. So it will be very helpful for you guys to understand and action. Um, this are the notice. I hope you guys keep it and uh, review it when you need when you talk to your uh, clients. Um, an unlawful detainer action is filed when uh, after you serve the three-day notice. How do you serve? Usually I don't encourage the landlord or the manager to serve the three-day notice. What do, what do I mean by serve the notice? Serve the notice, I'm, I'm, do I have a little bit of time? 
I, I think uh, give me five to six minutes, I would be able to finish this. All right, you give the notice to the la to the tenant. Let's say that you are the tenant. I give this to you. This is called serve. Uh, why would I not recommend the landlord do the service by himself? Because the tenant can go to the court and say, "Your Honor, he's lying." Jack Chang is lying. He didn't give me the notice. And the judge said, why do you think he's lying? Because he is the adversary in this litigation. Of course he would lie. He didn't give me this notice, but he said he did. The judge was like, hmm, that makes sense. Jack Chang would be lying because you want to kick her out. And also, I would be the person suing her, and I am also the person who signed on the proof of service. Do you think that the judge would, uh, you know, sometimes the judge would really think ah, there might be a problem. What do I do? Take a picture of him. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea, but usually, if you take a picture of the tenant, tenant, don't move, I'm going to take a picture of you when I serve you. It's a violation of privacy, right? And sometimes she can sue you for a I'm sorry? No, register mail is no good in service. We find a third party. I cannot serve you. Nancy is an independent, neutral third party. Nancy, do me a favor, serve uh, 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 my tenant, and she didn't pay rent. Nancy goes to her house, hey, are you uh, a pretty doll here? Um, uh, here's some document for you. Oh, you, you, you pick it? Oh, uh, this is three minutes. Can you dump it back at Nancy? No, hell no, this is not mine. Uh, you know, get out of my house. You cannot. As long as this service is past possession to you, it is served. You cannot go to court. Your Honor, she gave this document to me, but I dumped it back on her head. It's no good service. The judge said, no. As long as you receive it, it's a good service. All right, we find third party service, the person to serve it. You don't need to mail it. You do not need to mail it. Remember this. But if you want to make sure that the tenants get it, you can mail a copy, and in court, you know, it will, it will also make it. Uh, sense. Or another alternative that as attorneys would usually use is to find an attorney service. Attorney service is a company, the third party uh, company. They have professionals who are very good at dealing with people. Whether you're nice or rude, they are very good. You're rude, they're even ruder. You're nice, they're even nicer. So uh, I, I usually hire them to get the uh, service done. After the three-day notice and uh, your tenants still uh, don't pay your rent, what do you do? You go to court, you file the unlawful detainer action, and the summons, and the court is going to issue a summons. Hey, uh, pretty though, you are hereby summoned to uh, respond to this lawsuit within five uh, days uh, upon receipt of this. So in California, usually it's five days. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta respond. If it is personally served, if I have Nancy or a third party give this whole package, you know, an unlawful detainer action might be this, uh, you know, about uh, let's say I think it's nine pages. Here, pretty dope. Here's uh, a lawsuit. Uh, I, I put it on your uh, porch or I hand it over to you. If it's served like this. You have five days to go to court, to respond. When I said respond, it doesn't mean that you have to answer it. You can have other responses. I'm going to uh, talk about it later. But you have five days. If you don't do it, there would be a what? A default. I would, the, I, I think, uh, landlord will go to court, request for entry of default because the uh, tenant a pretty though it didn't respond. And the judge is going to sign on a default, and, and I, I, I will request a default judgment, and I'll get some judgment, and I'll get the rid of possession, and I'll have the sheriff coming and I change the lock and kick you out. I just completed one lockout yesterday. That, uh, that, is, that litigation has been going on for three years. They changed four lawyers. Okay. Now, <clears throat> You respond. I gave you the lo uh, this lawsuit. You, you, you don't. <coughs> you, tell, you, you receive this. Uh, 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 oh, there's another way of service. If I, if Nancy 
came to your house, uh, pretty though it's not at home. Second time, pretty though it's not home, at home. I couldn't find pretty though or, or John Doe or anybody. Third time, still nobody here. And then we have a service which is called substituted service. Post the, uh, give this uh, summons here and I mail out a, 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 a summons and complaint to the house which also, which is also valid in California. But in that scenario, you would have 10 days to respond. So you have a little bit more time. So pretty though, you have more time to respond, but it doesn't really help that much. It's only five days more. <laughs> now, <clears throat> responses. We have a lot of responses to unlawful detainer action. You go to court, you, you, you receive this complaint, what do you do? File an answer, right? And you get a, a, a response, usual responses that I'll, I'll answer it. In the answer, I'll file the defense. What are the defenses? Ladies and gentlemen, think back to what we have reviewed uh, the whole morning. The least of the duty is for the landlord. Pretty though is going to talk to the judge, is going to state in the, in the uh, uh, answer. I didn't pay rent, true. But it is because the, te the landlord failed to provide the, uh, uh, let's say, the last uh, defense of the garbage disposal. <laughs> and uh, uh, the landlord failed to uh, provide hot water. Landlord uh, failed to provide electricity in my house. The landlord didn't have a, a uh, the landlord left a big hole in the roof. You can list all those problems out and file the answer and go to court and hopefully you can prove it up. It doesn't mean that you have all those defenses, you win, you have to prove it up to the judge, to the court. Another action, but that will go very fast if you have the defenses. If you have the defense, oh, okay, I filed the answer, and the judge is gonna have a trial date, and pretty though, and Jack Chan will go to court and argue and present the case, and the judge said, okay, you win, he lose. But another response is that a demur, a demur is we have reviewed the three-day notice. If I want to file, if you want to file a demur, you will say, Jack Chang, your three-day notice is a problem. I want a demur. A demur will get you another like one month. So a demur will get you more time. Um, okay. Uh, well, if if the tenants are really tricky, they're gonna file bankruptcy. Bankruptcy will totally screw you. I said it because a lot of the tenants would do They file bankruptcy. The landlord, there was a, under uh, bankruptcy code 362, there would be an automatic stay. So all the legal action will be stayed. You have to wait three months to continue with your, uh, with your uh, eviction. But, very quick, guys, very quick. Uh, but, a, your lawyer, your good lawyer will uh, be able to file a motion to lift the automatic stay as in unlawful detainer case so that you can leave that uh, stay and you can tell the state court hey guys this stay is lifted I can still continue my uh, unlawful detainer action uh, all in all in the, trial, in the court you present your case and the landlord will present uh, the landlord's case if you think that there's de defects in the house uh, you bring some evidence, pictures, and some witnesses to testify that there are problems with the houses. And landlord needs only to prove that you didn't pay rent. And the house is in good condition, and you will be kicked out. Once there's a judgment, and the court is going to issue a, a judgment, and either some, in some courts, the, ju the court will issue a written position on the same day. Uh, in some courthouses, the attorneys will prepare the written position, and I will send a $125 to the sheriff, and the sheriff will give the written position, and then they will go out to your house, go to the pretty Doe's house, and put a notice on the door, hey, you need to evict in five days, otherwise we're going to change the lock and kick you out. Um, so five days, you need to move out, and uh, at 7.30, uh, the, the sheriff is going to have like a three or four, uh, you know, all uh, armed up officers uh, standing right in front of the house and you say, no, pretty though, you gotta get out, otherwise we are gonna lock the door, change the lock. And uh, as a landlord, I will hire a locksmith to go to your house and uh, change the lock and kick the tenants out.
and that will complete the whole uh, unlawful detainer action from A to Z. I hope that I'm not too fast or I'm not too slow. Thank you, guys.